Okay, Sydney Watson. Um, done a few videos. Most recent video is OnlyFans, the website capitalizing on loneliness. Hey, Sydney, I got some news for you, okay? Capitalism is capitalizing on loneliness, not just OnlyFans, all right? I'm sorry to break it to you. But it's actually the social, the socio-economic paradigm that we exist under that's doing that, not just only fans. I'm sorry to break it to you. Okay, sounds like a dumb video. We're not watching that one. What we will watch is this one though. The insidious war on men, the destruction of masculinity. Now, let me tell you something. Okay, I've got a particular interest in um, society. For those of you that don't know, I'm very interested in society, okay? And I'm interested in exploring the ways in which society negatively impacts people based on their identity, okay? One of those identities is men, all right? Sometimes I talk about this stuff on stream. Um, I think that sometimes there's a proclivity on our side of the, the, the aisle to um, disregard the ways in which society negatively impacts men. You know the like, the men are trash. You know the men are trash type meme? I think that was kind of a thing that was going around. It seemed to have died out a little bit, okay? Um, I don't think it's as bad as it was. Um, but one of the most insightful things that I can say to you that highlights where I th you know this issue kind of lies is the idea that um, men are trash is effectively the kind of progressive version of boys will be boys, right? And I think for a lot of people, understanding that sentiment helps them to understand what people mean when they say that there's a bit of a dismissal of exploring the ways in which society impacts men, right? And listen, I'm not saying that men have got it, you know, the worst or anything like that. I don't really think of it in those terms. But it's interesting to me that any time on my stream, that I've kind of spoken about specifically issues that affect men, because guess what? I'm a fucking man. Um, people sometimes react badly to it, which I think is quite interesting. And they don't like the idea. It makes them feel a bit uncomfortable that someone would explore that. Anyway, my point is this, okay? I'm going into this as someone who is actually quite interesting in understanding how society impacts men. Yeah? So I go into this in good faith. I want to see what the arguments are. It doesn't, it, the title's not great. The title's not great. The Insidious War on Men, The Destruction of Masculinity. Okay? Let's just watch the video and let's see what, what happens. And I'll see if I agree with anything, first of all. Let's go. This topic is really just the gift <sighs> that keeps on giving. All right. Oh, friendly. Hi, my name is Sydney. Welcome back to my channel. As per usual, this video would be nothing if it weren't for our loving sponsor, Surfshark. Now, masculinity is one of those topics that we hear about a lot. And most of the time, the conversation circulates its negative elements. How toxic it is, how it's a gateway drug to violence. I mean, there are full-blown groups of people who actually believe that masculinity in itself is synonymous with, like, violence and war. Blech. But if some people really believe that masculinity maybe. is in fact Who, this I mean, probably, maybe, I don't know, I don't really, whatever. Negative we'll accept that as true, I guess. in our men and boys, then it makes sense that they'd want to neutralize it. And in the event that they can't do that, destroy it entirely. Which is what I want to talk about today. Wait a sec, what's this? Not to make this about me, please by all means do, okay? Don't, you don't need to be polite about it. But the, but the men are trash trend was one of the things that kept me from accepting the fact that I'm a trans guy. Oh my God. I'm really glad that you shared that because absolutely the um, the ways in which discussions are had around the way societies affects men has a significant negative impact on trans men in particular. Trans men in particular can be negatively impacted by that concept, you know. Um, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, no. Listen, turfs for all the other issues, which are many. Um, what the fundamental um, issue that I have with TERFs, other than the fact that they're fucking horrendous transphobic dipshits most of the time, is the fact that they essentialize people. So they suggest that there's essential traits that exist within someone based on their gender that are unchanging. Um, and I just, I just, you know, don't... And, and that, that then leads to their conclusions that they make about stuff. And for me, 
that's beyond the pale. I don't agree with any ideology that essentializes people in that way, you know? Um, anyway, thank you for sharing that with me. Absolutely, it's something that affects trans men in particular, and I stand against it broadly for, for that and many other reasons. In any case, let us continue. The destruction or death of masculinity and the feminization of men. But before we do any of that, let's hear about our sponsor, which you better watch because I try really hard with these ads. What is this? What's going on what here? Is, what is this? Oh my god, this isn't your new Surfshark ad, is it? As it turns out, you were right. People don't want sex appeal. They want abject pain. Because life is pain. And then gardening. And then death. Why are you in pain? Because Lionel, my FBI agent, he can't see what I'm doing online when I use my VPN. It hides my IP address. I think he's stalking other people. Right. Why don't you just turn Surfshark off and then he can start tracking you again? No. Because Surfshark also blocks ads and doesn't keep any logs. And I can use it on as many devices as I like. And it even has its own private search service. Yeah, I'm really failing to see the problem with this. Don't people also get 84% off and four extra months free? I mean, yeah, okay. I don't know. I feel I feel bad trashing this, okay? I feel bad trashing this because she's, she's trying at least. Um, but this does come across as like college project type level of content. Do you know what I mean? It comes across as like, oh, I made this in, 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 in film, film school as my first video. What do you think? I'm watching it. Normally, I just skip past the advert, but it's a bit different than normal. It's not like when they just go, uh, oh, uh, th this video is sponsored by Surfshark. Um, if, if you want a, a VPN, um, may maybe consider clicking the link below and getting Surfshark. Hmm? So it's not really like that. They're trying at least. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, sorry, let's continue. When they use code Sydney and click the link in the description. Yes, but I just need to be alone. Hey Sydney, you wanna come over and throw rocks at construction workers while they're carrying heavy things? We're fighting the patriarchy today. Can't you two see I oh am warning? Oh my God. Some of you might remember seeing a photo of singer Harry Styles in a dress on the cover of Vogue magazine. A similar photo was also posted by Men's Health and well, that's a whole conversation on its own. Unsurprisingly, the photo went viral, especially after conservative commentator Candace Owens commented on it. She suggested that society cannot survive without strong men, that the city feminization of men is not a coincidence, but rather an attack, <sighs> saying that we need to bring back wait, men. Wait, wait, well, wait, what was that about Marxism? What was that about Marxism? Wait. Hang on a second. Wait. Uh, so the East knows this and the West. The steady feminization of our men at the same time that Marxism is being taught to our children is not a coincidence. <laughs> Listen, I'm, got, I'm gonna break it to you, okay? Unfortunately, Marxism is not being taught to children, okay? I wish it fucking was. <laughs> I, wish it, I, wish, I wish Marxism was being taught to everyone, but it ain't, okay? Unfortunately, it is not. What's actually being taught is the normal fucking shit that's being taught, which is your standard, your standard, uh, you know, being taught to just, <laughs> listen, <laughs> let's not get into that, okay? Let's not get into that. But Marxism is not being taught. Um, Marxism has got nothing to do with, uh, you know, this, like, I don't know. <laughs> Marxism equals government mandated forced feminization. The only solution, forced masculinity for everyone. <laughs> oh, come on, let's continue anyway, sorry. Sorry, 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 men. sorry. Now, of course, this sentiment was not shared universally with many people on the other side of things arguing that dresses don't mark femininity. We don't need to bring up manly men anymore Then we need to go bring up friends anymore. Neither have gone or going anywhere. I mean, that's true. That men can wear whatever they like and people- Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro are so vapid. People shouldn't okay. worry themselves with the things that don't affect them. Ironic, considering how radical leftists just love telling everybody else what to do. Have you guys met you? Seriously. A short time later, Styles posted yet another photo wearing whatever the hell this is, with the caption, bring back manly men. Now, if you're anything like me, then you patently don't care oh, about Harry Styles or slash. literally Mark any other hey. celebrity. Hey. Marx failed to account for HRT, or did he? True. Thank you very much for the sub, Dazzler. Welcome. Welcome to the Chudverse. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait. Men must wear dresses. Karl Marx, Communist Manifesto, Wikipedia. Okay. So, so yeah, she's just doing that. Oh. Oh my God. 
I mean, look, are there some people who can be a bit more realistic about like think the way that you should do things? Yeah, sure. But like, you know, there's some things that lefties propose that like are actually good and not just concerned with frivolous nonsense. I don't know. Men should be allowed to wear whatever they like in the same way Sydney Watson should be allowed to put on an exaggerated accent to appeal to a target audience. Is that what she's doing? And what they choose to wear. Seriously, until these people pay my taxes, I'm genuinely not interested in what they do. But if nothing else, this topic has actually raised some valid concerns about the state of men in 2020 and the overall feminization of traditional masculinity. Depending on who you ask, the feminization of men is either harmful, weakening our society, or suppressing innate biological tendencies or it's successfully uncovering and rooting out <laughs> toxic traits in men and manhood. It's either a significant What was that video about? problem or a welcome byproduct of blurring gender roles and stereotypes. Such in the case of Harry Styles. Or Gucci's attempt at releasing a tartan dress with a satin bow. I mean, yeah. Fashion houses release kooky clothes sometimes. Like this for fucking $26,000. Like kind of, like, what's the right word for it? Kitschy. Kitschy? Is that the right word? Is that the word I'm thinking of? Fashion, fashion, big fashion retailers will often try to challenge norms about what clothes people wear because it makes them money. I mean, yeah, okay. I, what, that's hardly new. It makes you think of, um, you know, in Zoolander, when they do the derelict collection and it's like basically wearing trash. That's that's obviously a, um, a, a, a satire of it, but that is essentially what you know tends to happen. Is is like these fashion houses will try and think of new ways to challenge the status quo about clothing so that they get attention. Yeah, exactly. Fashion designers make weird clothing. What a shocker! I mean, I don't know what to tell you about that for men in the hopes of disrupting the toxic stereotypes that mold masculine gender identity. Well, no, they're not. They're trying to make money. Come on, don't be silly. Well, they're certainly disrupting something. This is the face of, apparently you can pay me enough to wear this. But there really are people out there who believe that it is necessary to wear skirts and heels in order to challenge gender. Straight and happily married men wear skirt and heels at work to challenge gender norms norms. And this is just one cosmetic example of the push to change these traits in men. So when we talk about this, it entirely depends upon which side of the fence you stand. Do you want a society where the lines of gender are blurred, where there is no clear distinction between men and women socially? I mean, this person clearly is, well, I, I'd say, I would presume that they're non-binary. So this person isn't like, the person is non-binary. <laughs> like, they, I don't know. Just a... Just a little, just a little bit of misgender in there. Just a little bit of, little sprinkling of misgender in to chuck in there for you. Be beautiful. Emotionally, developmentally, and externally. Or do you want a society where men and women have clearly defined roles, determined by their innate immutable characteristics as two separate sexes? And of course, with a little added- Oh my God. I really hate this line of reasoning. That the innate characteristics that we have are so overwhelming are so overwhelming that there's nothing else. There's no divergence that you can have. And also, what that fails to understand is just how much um, our concept of gender and, and the roles that they've has changed so dramatically. I mean, look at this, dude. Look at this. <laughs> Look at, look at this fella. I mean, what is this? What's this? Hey, what's this fella all about? What's going on here? <laughs> what's that? What even is that? He look. He looks fucking cool as fuck. I'd fucking wear that. Yeah, mad drip on that guy. Oh, I mean, look at this. What is fucking? It's so silly. Like. We're fucking. It doesn't matter. We we we've totally have constructed. So where we, you know where does the idea come from that a man wears a suit and tie and a woman wears a blouse and a and a skirt? Like it's just it's ridiculous. Now nah, it's cool. Imagine wearing this to work. Imagine rocking up one day pulling that off. How do you do, my fellow workers? <laughs> I don't know. The war masculinity started centuries ago. Oh, anyway, sorry. It's just that, that idea that we need to have gender... Oh my God, sorry. Let's continue. Let's continue, okay? 
who wants to suit the date and time period. Well, I certainly know where I stand. It's the second option, in case that wasn't clear, because I don't want this. No, thank you. But then what right have you got to like dictate what this fellow wears? Like what's it got to, literally what has it got to do with you? Like if this fellow wants to wear this, then he can wear this, no? Like uh, what, are we to what are we talking about? State mandated clothing. I just, what what is her proposed solution here? How can she have any, how, like, how could she have any impact on what this particular man chooses to wear? <laughs> like, I just don't get it. What could she do? Is she going to go up to her and have a gun and be like, change your clothes now? <laughs> like, I don't know. What is she thinking she can do about this? Oh, my God. The content tree. Yeah, this is the content tree, probably. Listen, Milton, it affects us all, okay? I'll be fine. The feminization of men, at least in my opinion, has been in progress for several decades. If it helps, think about it as like he-man versus like this. In 1976, a sociologist called Robert Bannon wrote a book called The 49% Majority, where he detailed the blueprint of manhood, describing core tenets of masculinity at the time. These included things like not showing weakness or acting feminine, striving for financial success. Wait, hang on, what was that? No sissy stuff. No sissy stuff, oh my God. <laughs> Uh... <laughs> Openness and vulnerability were viewed as wimpy and effeminate. Men were to avoid acting feminine at all costs and show no weaknesses, which meant bottling up intimate or emotional aspects of their lives. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, that sounds fucking dangerous, okay? What the fuck? <laughs> what is this? What is this book she's referencing? Striving for financial... The Big Wheel. Men were expected to gain respect from their colleagues and to strive for power. There was a premium put on financial success, social status, and the need to be looked up to. Yeah, this is very... This is this is dangerous. This is, this is unironically exceptionally dangerous rhetoric because all you're doing is you're um, putting these expectations on men. And then if for whatever reason they can't meet up to them, say they've got a mental health condition, it all comes crumbling down, right? Like... This is fucking dangerous fucking rhetoric. I'm not being unironic there. You can't put all this fucking pressure on men like this. It's absurd. Social success and social status, projecting an aura of confidence and self- Manly men were expected to project an aura of confidence and self-reliance. Hey! Dev, thanks so much for the raid. I really appreciate it. Welcome raiders, come on in. Sebs and crew, hello. Um, we're just going over this video about masculinity. Um. Manly men were said to project an awe of confidence and self-reliance. The strong, silent type who projected grace under pressure at all times was idealised. Grace under pressure at all times. Jesus! Are these really the principles that these people want men to adhere to? This is fucking gross. Self-reliance, being the strong, silent type, and striving to be tough, adventurous, and live life on... Being a man was also tied to toughness, toughness, testosterone fueled aggression, and living life on the edge through an outgoing spirit of adventure. The edge. By 2020 standards, it's very clear that many of these traits would simply not be valued in the same way that they used to be. Nowadays, several of these things would be considered toxic masculinity, especially anything and everything relating to suppressing emotion or not wanting to act feminine, which, like, I guess leftists want men to do for some reason. Look, look at the headline on the screen. It, look, it's so explicit. No worries, Sebs. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. I hope you're good. Hope you had a good stream. It says it right there. Blowing people up is considered toxic. Marx has gone too far. It says right there it's bad for men's health. <laughs> Wait, does, does this person want to do things that make men's health worse or something? Is that what's going on here? That's what I, I don't know. I don't know how else to interpret this. It says it explicitly there. Why manning up is bad for your health. I just want you to cut me down a tree and build me a house. This isn't hard. Some research actually confirms this, telling us that young men themselves value intellectual strength over physical strength. They value openness and altruism more than they value autonomy. Although, if you ask me, I'd argue that men have always valued altruism. Just ask the men on the Titanic as they gurgled to the bottom. Also, right, can I just take issue with something here, right? Why is this woman lecturing me about what I should be like, okay? What the fuck's it got to do with her? What the fuck's it got to do with her? <laughs> what the fuck? I'm just, I'm just sat here thinking, this fucking woman, this femoid, is sat here fucking lecturing us all about what men should be like. Fuck you, what's it got to do with you? Saying that this man can't wear a certain way and can't dress a certain way, and also promoting ideas that actually have a negative impact on men's health. Fuck you, what the fuck? This is ridiculous.
What's going on? What the fuck has this got to do with her? I mean, I wouldn't mind if she was actually basing this in some sort of science and not just going, oh, these are the traits that we used to have. And oh, look, listen, maybe it might make men fucking slaughter themselves in droves, but I want them to be like that again. Like, what is this bullshit? Fuck off. Sorry to go off on one, but let's continue. Of the ocean. One article I read suggested that this change to masculinity isn't necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't signal the death of the cowboy, but rather the death of the gunslinger. The cowboy just got more sophisticated to fit in with our shifting world of office jobs and nerds. This idea might even help explain the decline in physical dominance in men, such as dropping testosterone levels and overall physical strength, which has been documented in a few studies relating to endurance and grip strength. One study, for example, basically concluded that the average college male has no more hand strength than a 30-year-old mum. In saying that, we know there's at least one thing you guys are good at gripping. My hand, when you take me on a nice date. Get your heads out of the gutter. Now, I'm not saying for a second that- God, she's so fucking desperate. What is, yeah, what is this fucking citation? She's literally, literally just shown that, that okay. We need, what, what is it? Like a citation clipping. Okay, that's what it's called now. It's called citation clipping, okay? When you have a study and you literally take a tiny screenshot from it, okay, and put it up there, and it's some t tangentially related thing that you're talking about. Did your hand strength? <laughs> What's... What... <laughs> what the fuck is... That? I mean, I don't know. There's potentially a number of things that could cause that, right? Literal cherry picking. Yeah, citation... Citation chimping, Okay. Quote mining. No, we're going to call it citation chimping. Oh, man. Jesus Christ. I don't know. It just seems really silly to hyper-focus on that. And using that to support this whole thesis that there's this decline of all this stuff. I don't buy it, okay? And have to abide by and fit into this 1970s version of masculinity. But society overall appears much more comfortable with the softer emotional man than the cut me down a tree and build me a fortress kind of man. The problem arises when men do actually have these traditional characteristics. They are increasingly unable to express them or act them out, lest they be labeled toxic or fragile and cast to the back of the proverbial gender bus. In early 2019, the American Psychological Association issued its first ever guidelines for practice with men and boys. Its primary message claims that traditional masculinity, such as stoicism, competitiveness, dominance, and aggression, is, on the whole, harmful. And honestly, these characteristics are now genuinely viewed as toxic masculinity across the board. Wait, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. If some fella wanted to cut down a tree and build a house, I'm pretty sure no one would fucking care. Like, for whatever, go and build your house, my dude. Go nuts. If that's what you want to do, it's a free country. Build a house. Go, go crazy, all right? But, like, I love the fact that she's citing doctors professionals studies and she's talking about how these are overwhelmingly saying these traits are actually harmful to men and she's just ignoring all of that she's ignoring all of that for her own personal preference of whatever fucking man she wants what a selfish fucking bitch honestly seriously fucking disgusting right sat here going oh these things are harmful to men but that's all the things that i like so that's what men should be like get the fuck out of here it's disgusting this is the thing with these rightoids, right? This is the fucking thing with these rightoids. They sit there and they promote all these ideas and they say, oh, I want this, this and this, right? They don't give a fuck about the consequences. They don't fucking care about the fact that this leads to men killing themselves, you know? As someone that's suffered with depression in the past, very serious depression as well, you know, fucking dark times in my past, okay? Like, the idea that a woman is going to sit here and fucking lecture me about how I should you know adhere or men in general should adhere to these standards standards which cause me in some ways to go down this these dark paths to go down these dark journeys is fucking disgusting and it makes me so fucking angry it makes me so fucking angry honestly anyway sorry sorry to go off on one okay i apologize for calling her a bitch that's a tiny bit misogynistic okay but that is overwhelmed by the fact that she's promoting these, these, these ideas that actually cause men to kill themselves. So fuck her, okay? Let's continue. And this is viewed as the path to violence and sexual harassment, and traditional masculinity is the gateway to get there. With this intense scrutiny on men all the time, even for innocuous behavior, it's really no wonder that men would want to separate and distance themselves from traditional manhood. The feminist movement has, without question, had an enormous hand in this. 
Over the last several decades, the purpose of women has been expanded dramatically. Rather than raising children predominantly, women can effectively do anything a man can do. Except create sperm, but I'm sure that science is working on that one. Feminism even the plain- God, she's so fucking not even funny either. Um, what's this? Um, I seen if I ever grew up in an abusive household and was told that having emotions is feminine and men don't feel sad or cry. I've been trying to get him to not suppress his emotions and tell me what he's feeling upset about anything he's gotten a lot better about it but he still holds stuff in because he feels emasculated when he lets shit out yeah i mean that is a particularly um you know tr troubling thing that happened that probably makes it much worse um i think broadly that that's like a concern right like even me and myself um i still i still carry around a sense of stoicism and it's like it's difficult for me to unpack that in some ways do you know what i mean like I do find it difficult to, to to be open with people sometimes in my personal life and stuff. And like that's like deep rooted into me. And I think I think that that some of it comes from the generation in which I grew up. Because I'm a millennial, so I'm a bit older than maybe some of you are. Probably a bit younger than some of you. Probably the same age as some of you. But I'm 34, so I grew up in a generation where there were still a lot of hang-ups about this stuff and about masculinity. It's only more recently in the past sort of 10, 15 years maybe, maybe even less than that, in which actually there's been more discussions and conversations about it. And to be honest, just the fact that people are more willing to have conversations and discussions about it, you know, helps me because I think, fuck, well, at least we can talk about this stuff now, you know? But even internally, like, I still struggle a bit with, like, some of the emotional stuff, you know? And, and I think probably other men that are listening to this probably feel the same thing, you know? Anyway, sorry, let's continue. ...field in almost all areas. Women can have sex like men, earn money like men, dress like men, and despite what feminist literature might tell you about equality, women have never been more equal. The problem is that nobody has really attempted to expand the purpose of men and uplift them in the same way. And why would they? What allegedly started off as a movement for equality, which it isn't, instead oh has become God. laser focused on the patriarchy and eliminating <sighs> inherent flaws in our male orientated society and its effect on women. Even the push to break down traits of traditional masculinity, such as independence, dominance, and suppression of emotion, has never really been about helping men themselves, but rather helping men help women. As aptly demonstrated by the UN and its tweet on International Men's Day this year. Just. Stop that. Even when people do point to ameliorating significant issues with men, such as the prevalence of male suicide rates, homelessness, divorce, loneliness, and so on, it's framed not as, hey, let's build up men, but rather, let's eliminate their harmful behavior. What's even- Yes, that's exactly the fucking point. It's precisely right. And it's not the fault of an individual man. The problem is, we're going to do the meme. The problem is society and the standards that men are the, the standards that men are expected to adhere to. That you've just fucking listed as positive traits that you think psychiatrists are silly for saying is bad. So she is perpetuating the issues that she's claiming to care about here with her own rhetoric. What the fuck? Even more interesting oh is that the same masculine traits society seems to want to eliminate in men seem to be the same ones we celebrate in women. That sense of drive, purposefulness, aggression, and leadership, just to name a few examples. So I guess here we are, where the lines between the, I, the, the Okay, the whole thing is, okay, this is really fucking easy. This is really fucking simple, okay? If a, if a man wants to fucking be a, a bodybuilder and fucking work out, okay? Wants to fucking be a Chad, yeah? Or whatever, be masculine. Fine, go on, you can do that. Absolutely, I have no issue with that. I've got friends, I've got friends. Now listen, my friends can sometimes say some things that are a bit spicy, don't get me wrong, okay? However, um, you know, I love my friends and I've got some that are bodybuilders. They go and work out at the gym and, you know, they are fucking got pretty typical standards of masculinity. I mean, if, normally it's fairly healthy and that's fine. And I've got other friends that aren't like that. They don't go to the gym, but they're, you know, they're more thoughtful or whatever, you know. You, you, you can do what you want. It's the same thing with women. If a woman wants to go and settle down and have a family, like, there's literally nothing stopping her from doing that whatsoever, right? Is there? Am I, am I missing something? Is there anything stopping this woman here from going and meeting a, a chad? 
and settling down and having them build yeah spicy dude bro takes yeah <laughs> but is is there anything stopping this woman from doing that I don't understand I don't understand what it is that's stopping them I mean look are there problems with and this is the thing are there problems with alienation and stuff like that sure yeah but the problem isn't the fact that oh they're trying to feminise men I just yeah yeah are we are we getting some <laughs> are we getting some fem cell vibes <laughs> I don't know oh yeah society isn't forcing everyone to be a chad so that's a problem Oh, okay, anyway, sorry, sorry to go off on one, but it just, listen, I know I went off a bit earlier, but it is, you can understand, okay, it's very frustrating as someone who's lived through this, okay, as someone who has experienced the expectations that are put on you by society, that's led you into, um, you know, difficult paths that have led to depression, that's led to some dark shit, to then later on, you know, have, have lived through that, to come out the other side, to now sit here, and I know I'm subjecting myself to this, okay, but hey, it is what it is. But to sit here and have to listen to this woman, like, tell me, oh, actually, this is how you got to be. <laughs> like, you know, you, you are literally advocating for my death, right? <laughs> like, and ironically, right, the people that say this stuff are advocating for the death of men. And it is as fucking simple as that. Easy peasy, okay? I'm going to fucking bite the bullet on it and say it. And that's disgusting to me are blurred, the roles are unclear, and while some people celebrate these things as positive steps towards equality and progressivism, it's clear that many men simply don't know where they fit in anymore, or how they should behave in a world that has practically replaced them with, like, vibrators and turkey basters and... Stop being graphic. I do what I want. You're not the boss of me. But maybe it's shaming men and denying them their masculinity that's leading to negative behaviour. In 2005... Wait! Rob Hang on a sec. Wait! She's shaming men that don't want to adhere to the standards. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I know it's cringe. I love the cringe sides. Men overcompensate when their masculinity is threatened. Willer, a sociology doctoral candidate at Cornell University, presented findings that men act more masculine when their masculinity is under threat. In his own words, the men reported feeling more ashamed, guilty, upset, and hostile when their masculinity was threatened, leading them to express greater support. Masculine threat men also reported feeling more ashamed, guilty, upset, and hostile than did masculinity confirmed men. States the Iraq war at the time and show a greater tendency towards homophobia, for example. This is something I find really interesting because it seems like we've created a world where men are constantly under attack, where their manhood is constantly being questioned, and there's a significant confusion over their role in society. We know from research that men presently feel confusion in their interactions with the opposite sex, which has only been heightened by movements like Me Too and Believe Women. In some studies, over 40% of men say that they are worried about navigating social interactions with women, from greeting them with a kiss hello to opening a door for them. Things which, in days gone by, were a sign of respect and chivalrousness, that today are viewed in some circles as sexist and overbearing. The attack on what many of us would consider traditional masculinity might be- I mean, I, mean, I don't know if it's different for me and the people that I've been with, but like, I mean, I, I might, you know, if I'm with, with someone, like, I'll open a door. If I'm with, like, on a date with someone, I'll open a door for them and- like, it's never really been an issue. I think there's maybe some think pieces that have come out. I think maybe there's some think pieces um, that have maybe come out that are like, oh, you know, opening the door for a woman is, is misogyny or something. I don't fucking know. But broadly speaking, like, I've never had an issue. Has anyone in chat had an issue of, like, opening a door for a date? <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I open the door for people all the time. Like, I, don't know. I just, I think what happens is that these people have got these think pieces that they think of, that people have written stuff like this, which is normally just fucking clickbait bullshit. But like, in terms of like real life interactions, I've never had a problem with opening a door for a woman and they've been like, oh, you fucking sexist. Like, I've literally just, just never happened to me. Listen, I'm doing an anecdote Andy here. Maybe there's a study on it. But I think other than think pieces and maybe some people on Twitter making silly arguments, I just don't think this is as much of an issue as you speak about. <laughs> oh, what the hell? When a man opens a door for me, I stop to lecture him about how patriarchy is killing women. I don't fucking know. 
be hard to picture on the surface. Some of it seems fairly deliberate, whereas other components feel like an unfortunate byproduct of our shifting society. As of 2020, there are more single-parent headed households than any other time in recent history, 80% of which are headed by mothers. Almost a quarter of all children live with a single mother, a 12% increase from 1968. In 2015, Dr. Warren Farrell gave a TED talk about what he calls the boy crisis. He talked a lot about fatherlessness and its effects on young men. Fatherlessness, as we've discussed on this channel before, has extremely negative consequences on young boys, such as alcoholism and crime. And we see that in the data also. So for example, before age nine, girls and boys committed suicide equally. Age 10 to 14, twice the amount for boys. 15 to 19, four times the amount. Age 20 to 24, six times the amount for boys. So if dad deprived boys is the number one cause of the boy crisis. And let's not forget, even in the cases where fathers are Wait, actually around, but hang on, isn't that that, that MRA guy? <laughs> I don't know, it was such a short clip. I don't really understand the context of that. TEDx, not TED. I know that image in the background was a bit troubling. What the fuck was that? I don't fucking know. Okay, let's continue. relationship it. breakdown. Child custody is often awarded to the mother, which leads me to ask just how valued fatherhood is anyway, and how that makes men feel about another role that's been ripped out from under them. Seriously, we all know what happened to Jim in Treasure Planet when his father left. It's like the saddest montage I've ever seen in my life. Disney. Why? In Pharrell's talk, he also points out how boys go from a father or male-deprived home environment to a male-deprived school environment, and this also has negative consequences. In recent years, we've come to find out that the education model most often presented to students better suits the learning styles of girls. In addition to that, some 77% of all American teachers and nearly 90% of American primary school or elementary school teachers are women. There is a significant gap between what boys find stimulating and engaging and what the female-orientated education system deems appropriate. which is why some researchers have concluded that boys and young men are simply being left behind because the feminized education system isn't built to deal with them. So, so one, one issue I have with this is I guess like this, this conversation is so poisoned because I think, I think like I'm receptive, I'm receptive to listening to arguments in which um, schooling lets down anyone, right? I'm I'm receptive to the ideas around that, but I feel these MRAs and these dipshits have just ruined the conversation by overegging the pudding. Do you know what I mean? And like I'm open to it. If someone could come along and say, "Hey, look, here's some evidence. Here's some stuff that demonstrates that actually there's issues." That's fine. But I always, you know, I don't know. I just I I feel that the well has been poisoned so effectively. And. There's some stuff here that just it sounds a bit ridiculous on the face of it, you know. And also, this video is like a mile a minute. Like they've just fired off all this shit at me about it, and I'm just like, okay, well, I don't know, <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, explains the United Nations did a worldwide study and found that boys were often graded higher on a reading test when the teacher did not know that the person who took the test. Was what? What is this? Yeah, we need more context. Boys are one third more likely. I mean, so I mean, what, what? This is like literally this has been typed out on a piece of fucking black thing. Like, what's what's the actual citation here? This is just. Hey, mug club. Pinklon, thanks so much for the gift to sub. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. What is this? I don't understand. Maybe maybe they could be giving a really good point here. Maybe not. I don't fucking know, okay? Oh, sorry. There's the source. Source OECD, March 2015. <laughs> That's definitely not Comic Sans. Anyway, sorry. Was a boy. Similarly, he also points out the boys do better overall when their teachers are also male. This is for several reasons, some of which are because male teachers challenge boys to work harder and have an impact on boosting their confidence in their own abilities. Or maybe it's because boys like having a stable male role model. So boys effectively go from a feminized home environment I to mean, listen. Yeah, sure. I mean, make it... I agree. Let's make a fucking... Let's make it so that more men are teachers and make it more equal. Yeah, fine. I'm up for that. That sounds good. If that helps children grow better, then that's fine. But like, you're just firing all this shit at me. I don't know what to fucking think. <laughs> And yeah, exactly. Like, 
I'm pretty certain that, that, that there's probably a perspective that there needs to be more male teachers. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of a way of constructing this, but do, do you think that perhaps it maybe is a bit at odds that you're suggesting that men need to be masculine? Because teaching isn't perceived to be a, like looking after children isn't perceived to be a masculine thing, right? So I don't want to come down hard and say she's being really hypocritical here, but I do definitely think there's an element of hypocrisy somewhere in there. And what I mean by that is that she is on the one hand pushing the idea that men have got to adhere to these um, certain traits of masculinity. Whilst on the other hand, complaining about the fact that, that there's not enough male teachers. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting. Think about. A feminized education system. Then some of them go on to work in an increasingly feminized workplace where they are fearful of interacting with women, where they're told to eliminate masculine language from their speech, to feminized marriages where women wield the majority of power, control their money, and allow them to have a man cave because she doesn't like that ugly table that you bought in 2009. She's not wrong. It really is gross. <sighs> You should probably throw it away. Bet there's a bunch of men out there who are laughing themselves all the way to the bank with their Pokemon cards that their wife tried to throw out that are now worth a lot of money. In saying all of this, maybe the problem is not the toxicity of masculinity or too much masculinity, but the complete lack of it. When I initially started writing this video, I looked heavily at feminizing men through humiliation and shame through making them dress effeminately or making them feel like women, so to speak, as two primary focuses. I mean, what better way to humiliate them than literally giving everything they do a stupid flimflam name? Manterrupt, manspread, mansplain, man- This is, this is such fucking surface level analysis, right? <laughs> uh, this is nothing to do with, oh, mansplain. Like this is, oh, this is got nothing to do with that. I thought that men weren't supposed to be nurturing and caring. Maybe that exception has something to do with men thinking they're not suitable for teaching. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm glad this woman thinks has told me I'm not manly enough and that I've let the side down really hammers the point home. Mansplaining is when men talk. I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Matt, the whole mansplaining thing and manspreading, I mean, that was kind of dumb, but there's some there's some there's some concepts that I think are worth exploring, but you know the over focus on it is just it's a relic of 2015, right? I made that last one up. That one doesn't exist, which I guess is fine because neither do the rest of them. Now, while nobody is actually forcing men to wear dresses, like in the cases I've yes, mentioned, true. poor Harry Styles. It appears that the idea is becoming more mainstream. A quick Google search turns up plenty of articles about the topic, anecdotes from parents and celebrities parading around their boys. I even found a series of mothers who put their sons in dresses to support a television series and book about a boy discovering cross-dressing and drag. A video, mind you, that BBC One tried to hide, but I see you. I see everything. The thing is, clothes- What? Okay. <laughs> so they, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what that book's about, okay? But I don't know what the book's about, but the way the way that uh, she put it made it sound like it's some sort of threat. <laughs> I just, oh God, this is so, I mean, it's at 1.25 speed. Oh God, this gives me a headache now. <sighs> it's the gay agenda. Yeah, sure. It's have an impact on how people feel and behave something that has been documented in many situations over many decades. In 2012, one pair of researchers coined the term enclothed cognition and attempted to further prove that clothes have a profound psychological and behavioral consequence for wearers. In the case of boys and men, there is a relationship between clothing, shame, and humiliation. And uh, additionally, but probably not unsurprisingly, the management of masculinity through forcing men to wear feminine clothing is not a new idea. In the 1970s, researchers carried out what they called the Stanford Prison Experiment. During the experiment, prisoners were given a dress or smock and not allowed to wear any underclothes. The study team noted that while they realize men in prison don't actually wear dresses, real male prisoners do feel humiliated and do feel emasculated. Wait, what has, what has that got to do with anything? <laughs> Wasn't, hang on a sec, the Stanford prison experiment is like, I don't understand what relation that has got to any of this. And and it's it was like it was a study that was widely criticised for not not adhering to solid scientific standards. Am I right? Wasn't it criticised for like uh, you know 
because because they didn't adhere to stringent scientific standards. I'm pretty sure that happened. Wasn't it? Didn't they end it early because it was so bad? There were human rights violations. The head researcher forced the results he wanted. But the thing is, who is being forced to wear a dress against their will? I just, I don't know, this all seems so foolish to me. Their goal was to produce similar effects quickly by putting men in a dress without any underclothes. Indeed, as soon as some of their prisoners were put in these uniforms, they began to walk and sit differently, to hold themselves differently, more like a woman than a man. What's interesting is that this has- <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> What's that got to do? I just don't get the link there. Because my understanding of the Stanford Prison Experiment is they were trying to demonstrate how if you put people in a position of power, negative, I don't know, I can't fucking remember. And yeah, they maybe were walking differently because their fucking cock was hanging out. I don't fucking know. Oh, I don't fucking know. Sorry, let's just continue, okay? Jesus Christ. been documented Christ. before. In the Victorian era, sometimes young boys were forced to wear feminine clothes in an effort to fix their unwanted behaviour, in a practice known as petticoating or petticoat discipline. This is not to be confused with breaching, where toddler boys for, like, hundreds of years wore dresses because it was easier to change their diapers and so on, but were eventually transitioned into pants and it was, like, celebrated because... I don't know, I guess, yay pants. Pity coding on the- <laughs> Oh my god! Imagine, imagine that you actually analysis. Oh, and, and then they change to pants because yay pants. I mean, what, what is this? This is so poor. This is such a poorly done video. Rather than actually explore and understand why it was that we decided to start dressing them in pants, I just, I, this is bamboozling me with how poorly done this video is. Fuck. Like, she's not proving anything. She's she's jumping from point to point. Oh, I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know The other anymore. hand, worked by humiliating and embarrassing hey, boys so much that he was careful not to engage in any kind of activity that would draw attention to himself, thus making him easier to control in public. Obviously, I'm not precisely sure how common petty coding was because as well as being like a weird practice, it's also a fetish because of course it is so uh when i google it i just get to see a lot of this early accounts that actually reference petty coding despite how much research mm. and reading i did are reasonably scant as well making it kind of hard to determine just how common it was and regrettably this just isn't a hill i'm willing to die on as of 2020 and again unsurprisingly there are plenty of accounts of this both as a punishment and a fetish and a Punishment, that's a fetish. There are also plenty of news articles where parents or teachers made young boys wear makeup and dresses to humiliate them. And those weren't particularly difficult to find. I had to look at a lot of- Wait, so some, because some fucking parents think that like, you know, forcing their children to do something they don't want to do, and, and like in, a, in, a, in an egregious way, because that happens, this is some big issue of men being forced to wear dresses. I just don't- I just don't I just don't see it. I'm just like I've okay. I'm gonna do an anecdote Andy here, okay? Right, this is what we're gonna do, chat, okay? We've got I've quite a few people in here. So who here is um a man? And okay, this this may this may be a bit complicated perhaps if you're a trans person, okay? Um But okay. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, listen, let's just go with it. Who here is a man? Okay, so if you're, if you're a trans man, if you're a trans man, I appreciate when you were younger, perhaps you might, you know, that this might be something that's, you know, significant, that might be um, unique to you, okay? But if, if you're a man, okay, broadly speaking, a man, okay, if you're a man, right? <laughs> Have you ever been forced to wear a dress when you've when you've presented as masculine? Okay, when you've presented as masculine, have you have you ever been forced to wear a dress? One, just say just say no or yes. Yeah, okay, you have. Yeah, by my sisters. Okay, by society, by society, have you ever has society ever forced you to wear a dress?
Okay. Okay, listen, uh, that's it. That's scientific. Sister, I'll let you know. Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, shit. See, when you've, when you've presented as masculine, I don't know the best way to put it, but hopefully that works. Society wouldn't do that. I'm right with society. <laughs> okay, that's scientific, okay? We've got more sources than she's got, so that's it. We, we've been decided. Society does not force people to wear dresses. There we go. Weird crap for you guys. I'm not even gonna lie. The funny thing is, what I'm describing to you is precisely what people on the other side of things are trying to fight against. They want this line between male and female clothing completely obliterated in sure. order to disrupt gender norms. But logically, there has to be a reason why men find dressing effeminately to be such an affront. And a good female friend- Yes, because society has conditioned us that way. Easy peasy friend of mine made a good point about this that I think is okay. worth repeating. When a woman wears dresses as her main item- Wait, hang on, hang on. Who did she say said this? To humiliate them. And those weren't particularly difficult to find. I had to look at a lot of weird crap for you guys. Literated in order to disrupt gender norms. But logically, there has to be a reason why men find dressing effeminately to be such an affront. And a good female friend of mine made a good point about this that I think is worth repeating. A good- female friend of mine made a po we're just literally citing shit my friends have said now <laughs> wait we're literally just feeling like yeah this fuck it this this person i know said this shit about i mean i could i get anyone could do that right just say oh my friend said this reference that there's your source my friend <laughs> what what the <laughs> <laughs> when a woman wears dresses as her main item of clothing, for example, she's considered very feminine or very girly. Dresses, for whatever reason, are a symbol of super femininity. Same with high heels. In fact- Yes, because society is- th Oh my fucking god! Do some fucking socio sociological analysis, you fucking idiot. Jesus Christ, for whatever reason. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, ask what the reason is. Okay, okay, let's give her a chance, okay? Maybe it's by magic. Studies have gone on to show that wearing high heels helps people distinguish men from women when all they have to go off is a silhouette. Wearing jeans and a shirt, by my estimation, is gender neutral clothing. Men wearing a suit and tie is masculine. Women wearing dresses is feminine. For whatever reason, which is kind of inexplicable to me, this is the- <laughs> Oh my god, it's kind of inexplicable to me, what the fuck? Oh my god, imagine being this obtuse that you don't even think to investigate as to why that might be. And you literally just go, oh, it's inexplicable. What is this video? Oh my God, what the fuck? It's inexplicable to me. I guess we'll never know. Ne don't think about it or interrogate it ever. Just say, oh, it's inexplicable. I've got no idea why. This is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. I've never watched a dumber fucking video than this, where someone has quite literally just said, and not interrogated it at all, and just gone, yeah, I've got no idea where it's like this, but it is just the way it is. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. Meaning that we assign to these specific things. That's just my two cents. Anyway, humiliating, emasculating, worthless. and feminizing- The most worthless two cents on the fucking planet and goes well beyond clothing. It has been used since forever as a means of control during war, especially in the form of sexual abuse. This humiliation usually neutralizes men and makes them completely unable to rise up and fight back, as described in several cases, such as in the Democratic Republic of Congo and Abu Ghraib, for example. One study quoted male victims saying that if a man in prison says that he is made to feel like a woman, this is commonly understood to mean that he was degraded, dehumanized, and sexualized. I'm just gonna add here too that many of the papers I read in relation to this topic sound somehow managed to link the way that men were feeling to misogyny and homophobia. As in, if a man is feeling worthless because he's been sexually abused, somehow that fits into a larger commentary about sexism and homosexuality. Which is honestly just, like, exhausting and goes to my earlier- Oh my god! It's so obvious. Yes. Because we're told by society that, um, you know, a woman getting fucked is degrading to her in some way at the board level or that like her being promiscuous is bad and we're taught that gay sex is bad in some way as well we're, we're indoctrinated into this idea in some way that gay sex is bad so when a man 
is degraded, dehumanized, and sexually assaulted and stuff. That's why they feel that way. <laughs> I know Pinkland. Yeah, this is the problem with these people. They get so close, <laughs> like oh, that close. The reason men feel certain things has nothing to do with society. It's a mystery, really. No one has been able to figure it out. I mean, Jesus Christ. Your point about how helping men is never actually really about helping men. I'm just... Stop this. Now, again, I realize that what I am talking about, what I am describing here, is precisely what people on the left want to change. But their methods don't revolve around building men up and supporting them, but rather criticizing them for characteristics that they naturally have. There are also plenty of other areas that we could have explored in this video relating to this phenomenon, such as the feminization of the military, the feminization of the police force, and any really other male-dominated environment. How we have changed our language, how we talk about straight white men as this, like, really overbearing negative force in society, and so on. But this video is just clearly long enough as it is, so, you know, another time. Now, in saying everything that I've said, I want to be clear that there is actually nothing wrong with being a man who is not the perfect picture of traditional masculinity. Not everyone can be oh, a man. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your permission. I appreciate that. For you giving me the permission to be like that. Thank you. I very, I truly, I truly value that and that's okay. However, shaming men who do fit this mold, whether that be entirely or partly, is having, in my opinion, entirely detrimental effects on society as a whole. Unequivocally, there is a significant value in strong masculine men. These are builders, leaders, protectors, soldiers in our society who complement women and make up for the things that we simply can't do. And there's nothing- And yeah, listen, there's nothing wrong with masculinity. Of course not. There's some masculinity that's based, of course, you know? But it's it's explore. It's what you're supposed to do is explore the ways that some aspects of masculinity can have a toxic impact on society, and on yourself and on other people. And yeah, apparently women can't do this shit. It's only the men that can. Nothing wrong with that. There never has been. At the end of the day, attempting to what is it that women simply can't do? I mean, yeah, exactly. Like they can be leaders. They can. What was it we just saw? mold, whether that be entirely or partly, is having, in my opinion, entirely detrimental effects on society as a whole. Unequivocally, there is a significant value in strong masculine men. These are builders. So in the army, women can do that. Carrying someone on their shoulders. Protectors, soldiers in our society who complement women and make up for the- th Someone running. Things that we see. Did you know, running is a masculine trait, okay? If you're a woman, you're not allowed to run anymore. Simply can't do. And there's nothing wrong with that. There never has been. At the end of the day, <sighs> attempting to destroy the characteristics that underpin masculinity has not helped us. Rather, if we're being honest, it's hindered us. Replacing masculine influence with this much feminine influence will never result in balancing out society. We need masculine men. We need the gunslinger, and shaming them and feminizing them out of existence has certainly not helped us so far, and it absolutely won't help us in the future. Now, before I open the floor to all of you, this is just a reminder that you can download Surfshark VPN using the link in the description. When you do, you'll receive 84% off and four extra months free. Now, I open the floor to all of you. What do you all think? Is Harry Styles wearing a dress actually a problem? Is this something we should care about? Is masculinity actually under threat? Are men being feminized? Do you think that this entire thing has been blown way out of proportion? And what do you generally make of this issue overall? As always, if you like the video, hit subscribe and the thumbs up button. If you want to leave a comment for free to do so, just be respectful about it. And I will see you guys next time. <sighs> okay. That's all I've got to say. I've got nothing more to say on that. I'm uh, amazed and bamboozled by just how how poorly done that video was. <laughs> oh look, to be fair, she has put in the uh, you know the links. Oh god, if I if I had the time, I'd love to go through and actually read these and establish uh, you know do, do do these things actually back up what she's trying to say in this video or not. <laughs> no, I'm not clicking the links. I don't have time. I need to move on. That's the problem. That's the limitation. That's the limitation of this stuff, unfortunately. Oh, okay. That's it. Nothing more to say. Stupid video. I've said all. I've said all I've got to say. Nothing more. That's it.
mean, yeah, okay, they were, I, don't, I just don't care. 